Okay, so hello everyone to the first episode of this podcast called Better Every Day. And I'm really happy to start this project. I have a friend on the call. He's called uh, Real Dan. He also has a YouTube channel, so make sure to check him out. And um, okay, so let's get right into it. The first question is, uh, what inspired you to start your self-improvement journey? And how has it impacted your life? Uh, that's a really good question to start with here, Marlon. So how I started with my self-improvement journey wasn't just a simple, you know, night over switch. These are years of like wanting to improve my life, but I just never found a way to do it properly. Like I could never find a starting point. Mm -hmm. You always found these people who say like, oh, you need to improve your life. You know, if you don't do this in your 20s, you're going to be broke forever. And it's like they put all this pressure onto you. So you're like, well, where do I start? You know, where, where do I run to? Who, who do I run to? Yeah. But then you realize like it's not just that simple so how i started was well you could say thanks to hamsa that's like the guy who mainly introduced it to it uh, i've been seeing some other videos before him before he became hamsa as we know today like some other youtubers were talking like they were showing you these cool graphs like oh this is what happens to your mind and mm -hmm. everything. but you know it never really clicked in until someone does the work <clears throat> and then uh, becomes um oh what is that work called um I'll come up with it later on. I don't want to waste too much time, but it. Yeah. But what inspired me was mainly Hamza to see like the transformation and some other individuals that also wanted to get into self improvement. Yeah. So really, and also like with Andrew Tate, also like it it blew up. Like it all became like it all came at the same time. Like it just blom like, like it blossomed out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, no one was talking about how to make money. No one's talking about like how to self improve. No one was talking about like how to min max as a man. Basically, like you can have everything because you've always been told like no, you can only have two or three things and that's it you know either you're good with money or you're ugly it's like well you can fix both yeah. <laughs> sort of things yeah and for, for me it was also uh, with Hamza like um it was, it was kind of funny it was like really randomly I was on a reddit um about my most favorite musician his name is Scarlett doesn't really matter but um I bought clothes from a store and he has a kind of edgy clothes and stuff like that and I had really bad like confidence and anxiety and I was scared to go outside with those clothes and then a guy in that server posted a link for a Hamza video um, under my message. And then I clicked on the video and then I just got sucked into it like a fucking truck. And so, yeah, the first guy that I discovered was also Hamza. And then um, that was like one and a half years ago. And I didn't take action for like three months. I think that's kind of normal. And uh, then also the whole thing with Andrew Tate since like, I don't know, I think it's all already a year since it like blew up. It's like crazy movement yeah. and like self improvement masculinity, making money and go to the gym, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. No, how I came up with Hamza and Andrew Tate, if you start with Hamza, Hamza was just like, um, it was like actually through Andrew Tate, I met Hamza. I know it's a bit weird. Otherwise, it's like all like the way around. Mm -hmm. But it's because I, it's funny enough, because I joined, like, how I, I well, didn't meet Tate, or I, I knew, started to know Tate before he became famous, like a couple of months before. Okay. It's when he started doing some podcasts over there, but I actually met Tate via crypto group. I didn't meet him physically, but I just like someone t started talking about him. And I was like, who is this Tate? Like I, I started seeing my names over here and there was a Romanian guy that linked him to me and I saw his YouTube channel and I was like, okay, you know, he's talking about some stuff, you know, because I was like into the red pill stuff before the red pill became mainstream. Now the red pill is just garbage. Mm -hmm. This was like the purest form of red pill before like it was just meant to teach you like, Hey man, go to the gym, start working out fix your hygiene, you know, find a haircut, you know, basically just upgrade yourself from a loser to a winner, that kind of stuff. So it was via there. And once I started watching Tate, you know, I joined his Oslo university, just fast forwarding now. And that's how I met a couple of guys who were doing copywriting. So we decided to make a mini war room, you know, like 99% of people do. So we were like six people and via them, they started talking about Hamza. It's like, oh, are you from Hamza service? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a moderator. Like the, there was like two guys that I kind of still talk to but not much as more they're like moderators for him so they start talking about him but i felt like i didn't need it i was like ah he's just another guy that's trying to become big like i, mm -hmm. I kind of like pushed hamza away which is <laughs> kind of stupid to see now but uh so yeah fast forwarding we all kind of got tired of this copywriting thing we all started doing things i started working into business i got into a business job I started call calling and shit like that and that's kind of went downhill if you could say like that <laughs> So that's when I, my journey started like with the self-improvement, I started hitting the gym and everything, but I was only in it for the physical and the physical part. I never did the, the mental health thing. I, I always ignored it. You know, I always pushed it away. Like not mm. only weak people need to fix their mental health and all. <laughs> was I wrong? Mm. Like I always thought like, you know, being a schizo was good. Like, oh yeah, always have those 
demons in your head and you know reason to go to the gym because you hate yourself but you know yeah. whatever yeah, that's also... so i actually started t taking hamza's advice for about a month ago that's when i started to watch his content again like i've been subscribed to him i've been in the server for some time but i never really took first step yeah so i Great. yeah so asking me a question how does it impact your life a lot like i, I don't no longer play video games i no longer watch porn <laughs> I no longer all do this sh like shitty things that I used to do. Even I was hitting gym, so I was wasting potential for a long time. And you, and yeah, you had no trouble with cutting those things out of your life, just like that. Uh, well, I mean, video games and pornography and shit mm. like that. It's been a tough journey, I would say. It's not something you can just quit. I've tried yeah. many times, but only to end up failing. I think Hamza said a really good thing was the rubber band effect. You know, you always pull back, like, oh, I'm gonna start mm. eating healthy. Then I'm not gonna do back. this, da, da, da. and then it steps back. Yeah. So. I was focusing too much on this end and not this one, which is like pushing it up. Yeah, but like changing the basic it effect. Started, yeah. <laughs> no, it all started with me just like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead, dive deep into this. So I started reading the book. They call the easy PC method, mm -hmm. and that's why it cured me. <laughs> I even made a video. Like, as soon as I read that, I was like, I'm going to make a video about this. Yeah. So that was like my first step, like the first real step, which was to cut that garbage out of my life. And with that came video games, surprisingly. I don't know. Maybe it's not for everyone, but for me, it was like, I kind of did it at the same time. I was like quitting video games. I wasn't playing as much. Like all my friends were like, oh, I joined on this event, bro. Saturday, we're going to play like this, this, and this. And I was like, I wasn't feeling it. Like it just snapped. I was like, no, nope, this is not fun for me anymore. I'm, I'm suffering. I'm feeling like every time I'm playing these events, which lasts for like hours, hours, I was suffering. I was like, fuck, I could be doing something else right mm -hmm. now. Like I wanted so many times just shut my PC off and take a hike. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have the um, enough willpower to do it. But with this whole like starting no fab, oh, no fab, it's not even no fab anymore. It's just like quitting that shit. Like yeah, it's not on your mind. Like after some time, yeah, it's, it's not, not on your mind. mind it's like, crazy. It's, just, it's so fucking yeah. good. Yeah. So with it came with the games. So it's like I haven't touched. I still have them on my computer, but I haven't touched them for mm -hmm. like three weeks now. Yeah. Like they're there, but because I've tried this method, like uninstalling them, but I end up installing them again. Like oh, you know, I, I really want to play now, but just having them and not touching them is like it's, it's, it doesn't affect me. Like I could have seven to eight video games that I used to play daily. Nope. Like it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Maybe you want to also introduce a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I'm kind of, I struggled for, with NoFap for a long time. Like I, I mentioned I'm on 7 Proven for like one and a half years now. And I struggled for like a whole year because I went from like beating my meat every day, like three times um, mm. to like once a day and then slowly went to like three times a week two times a week and then i had a girlfriend and then i didn't do it for like nine months at all and then nice. i broke up with her which was like and then you went back three weeks ago and i've oh. i've relapsed two times to be honest but it's all right i'm trying to get right. back onto the track uh it caused yeah. all this, of this energy i don't know where to put it so it's kind of hard and with video games um I didn't quit for a really long time, but, and then I just decided to fucking quit like a month ago. Um, I lost the discussion with all my friends. Friends. <laughs> and well, yeah, video I games mean, they're there because you're playing games. Yeah, and then I joined the video, I, I joined the server back, but I didn't start playing video games again because they did want to talk to me and they were like kind of upset that I left, but I'm not playing video games anymore. Mm. And um, yesterday, I knew about this before, but I saw a really interesting graph. It was. Um, like the dopamine baseline. I don't know if you've looked into that, but um, yeah, yeah. start on a baseline, and when you do something, get a peak, it goes up, and then it goes below the baseline again. So yeah. every time you it's that you have an orgasm, or you watch porn, or you play video games, or you take drugs, you go below the baseline, and then you feel worse, and then it slowly goes up again. And that's kind of motivating me to not get the peak so the baseline gets higher and higher and higher but not a peak and then drops again yeah when i have that slowly balance up <clears> like <throat> it maintains higher than normal yeah. so whenever you do regular activities like just taking a walk or talking to new people it should just maintain at a high level but it doesn't spike up and now i can relate to that i guess i'm suffering from like the withdrawals right now i can feel it sometimes like my mind i can feel i can feel it right now it's a bit heavy but i'm just trying not to like go back to it it's just a little monster it's suffocating down here you know it's not getting any oxygen not any food no sunlight it's just you know i'm suppressing no, it as I'm much dying. as i can yeah so by reading all these books about self-improvement and watching videos it just motivates me to even go further 
and doing podcasts like look at this now like three weeks ago i would be jacking off in a bathroom yeah. <laughs> instead of to you right now it's insane how much is three two weeks can actually change once you change your routines and change the um, environment like also. the root of co- yeah exactly the root cause of everything mm. like when uh, when you're chilling in a discord so, server yeah. with like other people and self-improvement mm-hmm. oh yeah and then this happens like you end up on a podcast so, so surround yourself with like people that are like you and that can push you forward and that are successful and you will end up like them <clears throat> yeah i mean it's also motivational like it also i mean the reason why i'm also taking this most action is because i saw the hamster video which was like two and a half two and a half hour long i just like threw everything on the side I was like, okay i'm just gonna watch this video i'm just gonna genuinely take this video seriously and i'm following the steps by steps like i probably have to re-watch it again just to see if i haven't missed anything but i have generally i'm like going the right way the right direction it tells you to and i always wanted to have like a community f- like that i built and people can actually like join and be there and feel like they're actually have a sense of belonging because also that that's another like another thing we can talk about like loneliness for male for men like us in age like we don't really have like we can say we have a lot of friends but it doesn't really mean anything when yeah. like, all you do is just go out parties play video games you know do dumb shit that really doesn't get you anywhere yeah. you know you're just looking out for that pleasure it really doesn't feel like yeah. friends to be honest like no i feel like that no. last weekend like i was outside like in kind of partying celebrating easter uh with a guy that i that i know from school and like it was fun and stuff but like those other guys are not my friends like they don't benefit my life in any way like they're just taking drugs and being stupid and smoking and doing yeah. random illegal stupid shit and no, like they're not your friends and for what <laughs> you know what is going to benefit you in 20 30 years yeah you can have some fun stories yeah. but where are you gonna be if you still continue that way you know yeah yeah i would say it's like it's good to walk through that like it's some experience like i wish i could have done also some of that stuff i never really was the social type or i mean i was the social type but i wasn't social enough to be outside with people like i always eh, i don't know i think like my parents always teach me like don't do drugs don't do alcohol you know like pretty strict about it yeah. so i never really was like outside because i spent more time oh well i think it's because i spent most of my time playing video games online like 99 percent of the time <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. it was the same for me. Like yeah. the amount of parties I said no just because to play some extra rust with the boys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, fuck that game. I had no I hate it. social life for like. I think it really developed like a year ago, especially with meeting my girlfriend. And before that, I couldn't even go outside without putting a mask on my face because I was so insecure about how I look, which was crazy. Mm. And then I just got more like. I improved my social skills and my confidence and then I just got more into like uh, the dating scene and then I found my girlfriend and then I also went out with friends and stuff so now it's like kind of good but for a long time like for I think it was started when I was like nine to like 16 I just played video games 18 hours a day <laughs> mm. <laughs> I did nothing <laughs> yeah no same yeah same man and uh, I wasn't even that good at it <laughs> like I could never I mean, it was one game when I played Counter Strike. I think that was the only game I took it to heart, and I actually wanted to become like a professional player. But man, I'm glad that never happened because I think it would be hell, in a way. Yeah. Just like, damn, this is it. Like, it's a video game. My life is just dependent on one video game. I don't have self worth. Like, I'm not contributing anything. I. So yeah. I played a video game. Called... <laughs> does that like answer? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. I always played a video game yeah. called Paladins. It's like a hero shooter. Um... Oh yeah. I was really, really good at it. Like, first played on PlayStation, and then I was like in a team that we scrimped, so like five versus five with like callouts and stuff. I also played some tournaments, so I was kind of like a pro. And I don't play the game anymore, but when I used to play on PC, it's like much easier because of FPS and stuff. Uh, I was like top. Everyone considered me like top 10 out of all players. The player base is not that good, but I just quit the game because it didn't mean anything to me anymore. And yeah. I can't make a career out of it anyway because I'm like 17 and my mom wouldn't allow it and stuff like that. Okay, so what are some of the biggest challenges that you've like faced by trying to improve yourself and how did you overcome them? Oh, the biggest challenges. Um, I would say honestly was mainly the pornography reason. Like it, it felt like I always had to give something in return. But in reality, it's not like, as I said, the book told you about like, oh, all of these uh, no no fab challenges, you know, try 90 days and everything. It really didn't improve me. Like, yeah, sure. I got more energy after struggling. But the thing is, you were doing willpower. Like, it was still in your head, even though you were like 
how do I say this, trying to improve yourself, but it was still there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the biggest challenge was that, like, I think that was the thing that held me back because as soon as I relapsed, like many times a week, I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to do anything. I became lazy. I became anxious. I like, it felt like everyone knew that I did something bad. Yes. You know, like, you no can one knows. Like, this guy's normal. I'm like, no, bro. Inside of my head, I'm like, please don't judge me. It's like, we drive off the porn and like, you, you think you were creeping. Like, you you think that everyone else knows that you're fucking creep, but no one knows. Yeah, it feels disgusting. Like, yeah. You feel like you, you haven't like been purified. You, you feel dirty, you know? Yeah. So I think that was one of the biggest challenges because it felt like, I was like building this mentality of like, oh, if I don't jerk off, I'm going to be good, get good. But it's like, you know, well, if I do it, I, I still fall down. Like I was just digging a hole, even though I was trying to like get out of it. I still up digging the hole deeper and deeper. Yeah. Um, so I think that was one of the challenges because now I feel like after not doing it, oh, <laughs> uh, after not doing it for so long, it's just, it doesn't come in my mind anymore. Like I can focus on doing things that actually matter. Yeah. Like for now, instance, it's now I'm working out in this garden thing. I showed some pictures on my server. We've come really far. I've been doing this. I can talk to my parents, like looking up in the eyes without feeling like a sense of judgment in them. I can do many things now. That's, like I, I want to improve my physique now. I have, I haven't gym for a good long time because you know I felt like I hit this depression thing, so I didn't gym for a very long time. I wasn't making any money either, so you know all of these fronts like was crumbling down really fast. But changing this is like now I'm feel like okay, let's fucking go. No, no, let's 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 do something about this. Yeah, it's great. I'm really uh, proud of you, man. So. Yeah, so I think that was the biggest, like, withdrawal I had. Like, I was, people always saw me, like, not a leader, but, like, they saw me, like, this is the guy that wants to push forward. Like, I was always pushing, like, hey, come on, guys, let's do it, let's do it. It's like a team player. Um, So I don't, I'm not sure if I got that from video games, but it's just, like, it always been like that. Even if in physical sports, like, when you go in school and you do, let's say, like, a killer ball or whatever it's called, like, you know, you have to, like, build a team or whatever, and then you have to, like, throw this ball so mm -hmm. you get touched, you're out. So I was, like, pretty competitive in that aspect. Yeah. Also in sales role, people told me like, yeah, you, you actually want to drive forward. Like you don't even want to be the guy that sells. You just want to have a team that sells for you. Kind of. I'm like, well, yeah, kind of. So by PMOing, I was like going back. Like I, I was ruining for myself. It was like a really mess slip up. I don't know how to tell you with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my biggest challenge was that, and I overcame it and I just feel like I'm free now. I can run like as much as I can without feeling like nothing's going to stop me now. Yeah. And that's why I built communities, making YouTubes, talking to you. Uh, reading books like I'm just improving every f aspect of my life right now yeah just because I quit that it's silly like imagine if I didn't do that for four years ago I would have been <laughs> in another fucking realm right now <laughs> yeah probably it's, it's crazy what some improvement yeah. can do especially like a short amount of time and also like overall like it just when you do it one year it's like so much better and like you get so much more improvement than if you would do a bad habit for five years I, I, if you know yeah. what I mean like it just skyrockets like a snowball effect, just bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better. And are you struggling with like diet and like healthy food and junk food by any chance? Mm, I would say this, I kind of forgot to mention this. So before I started self-improvement, uh, I was living with my mom and let's just say food wasn't very healthy or at least we didn't eat that healthy. Like it was a lot of carbs and things like that. So that obviously, you know, affected my mental health, uh, it made, uh, drastically. So I decided to move out to my dad instead because my parents are divorced. Um, so now I'm living with my dad, even if it's a small cramped apartment, but we eat way healthier food. Like we eat single ingredient foods now, like rice with some meats and broccoli, and we barely have any sauce with it. Like maybe some mayo, but it's like, that's the most unhealthy thing that I would eat. It's just mayo. Yeah. <laughs> so my diet right now is pretty clean. It's nothing that we do, we do on purpose. It's just always been like that. My dad always been like a clean eater. We barely eat fried food. Like I think the latest, yeah, I think the uh, latest time I ate fried food was two days ago when I had my first kebab for like four months mm -hmm. because I was traveling for like four hours. I was like, I'm stupid hungry. I need to eat something. Yeah. So we ordered. So that was like my first time in forever. I had like fast food. <clears throat> so my diet is not really that difficult. I can always improve it, obviously. Like, you know, maybe add some more proteins or maybe like lower something. But it's compared to most people, I think I eat very healthy. Yeah. And I feel healthy when I'm with my dad. Yeah, that's great. And have more energy. Great. So what is that? Also, your dad is like yeah. eating kind of healthy because that's that's really rare. rare. Like, my parents are not uh, eating that healthy. I mean, it's, I guess it's above average still, but not like, I want to eat even more healthier. Like, we always get like yeah. uh, meat 
then vegetables, and then it's sauce, and I always eat the meat and vegetable, vegetables with all the sauce. But sometimes, like, when my mom is, like, ill, or she had no time, she's just throwing a pizza in the oven, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to eat this yeah. now. And if I don't eat, I get in trouble, or I, I will go to bed hungry. Like, I might eat as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a lose-lose situation right there. Yeah. And... Yeah, and it was the same with my mom. My mom used to work a lot. My dad is retired, so I guess that's why. <laughs> So my mom used to work a lot of hours, and me too as well, so we never really had the time to like cook a proper meal. I would probably cook the healthier meals, but it gets tiresome doing it every single day. So I have, I'm have i grateful for my dad, though. He like, you know, he fixes the food. Like, I just let him touch the kitchen, basically, and I, I just focus on my work. So I feel like moving to my dad was probably the best decision. I wish I did it before, but it was so difficult because I didn't want to hurt my mom's feelings. Like, oh, you know, it's not about her. It's just me, you know, I wasn't feeling bad. But I actually met my mom for the first time in three months during Easter. And you, she changed, like, she changed, like, she understood, like, yeah, I was talking, I talked to her, like, hey, it's not your fault, this is about me, I was fucked up in the head, it's like, yeah, I kind of realized, but she couldn't help me. Yeah. <laughs> my dad, at least, you know, we can, we men understand each other, it's difficult, like, I never really had this bond with my mother, so I think that's also the one of the reasons, me and my dad, we bond really well. So. Uh, we became, like, best friends. Your parents are divorced? But me and my mom, yeah, they divorced when I was 13, 14. Did it impact you in, in any way? I mean, yes and no, because my dad is a smart man, so he started talking to me about, like, the, about this, you know, like, you know, mommy and daddy is not going to leave anymore when I was, like, 11, 12. Like, he started, like, stopping, dropping me some hits, like, hey, you know, soon I'm going to have to go, or, like, whatever. So when they actually, the official day came, like, hey, when he, you know, said goodbye, yeah, sure, it affected me, but in the long term, yeah, it did, <clears> because, you know, I started living with my mom, like, a feminine, uh, aura around me like i never really was going out that much you know I, you know you, you become comfortable uh when you're raised by a single well single mom if you want to put it that way uh so i never really had this i guess my the grand majority of my teenage i didn't have my dad on my side so that actually affected me a lot i started playing more video games so checking off more like you see like i was more feminine uh in the in those ways mm -hmm. Even though I wanted to be a masculine, like more masculine, like I saw my friends like hitting the gym, I'm like, yeah, I want to do that too. But, you know, I had this constant fight in between like, oh man, should I really do that? Is that really, you know, my mom is a very safe person. It's like, oh no, don't do that. Otherwise you get hurt, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm going to do it anyway. So yeah, there's that. Uh, but what's with my dad, it's like, yeah, you know, he's more stoic in that way. Uh, he's always wanted to have great sons. And so I'm here to deliver it. Mm hmm. Yeah, and he understands what I'm doing right now. I've talked to him, and he's a very talkative. But you can reason with him. I might even have him on my YouTube channel later in the future. Like that would uh, be great. <laughs> like he's yeah. No, he has so much shit to drop. Like it's insane. Yeah. Like he's philosophical ways of talking and everything. Like we can talk about anything. Yeah. I couldn't do that with my mom. I couldn't even talk about girls to my mom because I would be so embarrassed. Yeah. With my dad, I can like talk anything. Like I can do the biggest fuck up, and he would understand. But it's like okay, we gotta fix this problem. <laughs> you know. Yeah, mm. I think like especially so, older people, they have like a lot of wisdom and knowledge because they've learned so many lessons that they can give to like younger people. Yeah, and because they're not like familiar familiar with like social media and stuff, I think we have to kind of push them to go in front of the camera and do like a I don't know video like you do a video <laughs> with your dad, so he goes in front of the camera and shares like very valuable lessons for people like us. And I think we can yeah, no, have a plan of like uh, yeah. No, my plan is to do like an interview with him, like have a camera just pointing at him. And, and I'm just going to ask questions, you know, obviously there's going to be in Spanish though, because I'm Sp he's Spanish speaking, he doesn't really speak that good English. Uh, so I would just have to translate, but that's not a problem. Yeah. Just like we're doing. You know. Yeah. And so okay. have you set any goals for yourself? Like, and how do you set them? Um, if I have any goals, uh, like any, any I big goals. Well, Wait, I didn't catch it. <laughs> Any, like, big goals that you set for yourself? Like, building physique or, like, squatting a special amount of weight? And... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you could say I have a kind of general goal. Like, yeah, obviously, I want to have a better physique. Uh, right now, I don't I don't really have, like, a goal. Like, oh, I want to do this and this. Because now, I don't have a gym. Uh, I had to cancel my gym. And the gyms that I have here are, meh. Or, can I mean, so I have some equipment. So my goal would be, like, yeah, to start doing it and become better at calisthenics mm -hmm. I guess that would be like my best option right now uh so my goal in physique is obviously you know better than what i have now go back to what i used to be i used to be much bigger <laughs> now I've, I've gone i've gone down i see my page i'm like fuck dude how did i let this happen mm -hmm. uh 
so go up and become better with the physique. Obviously, that's one prior. Second prior, my other goals is build a better community. So to grow this community that I've built so far, uh, make it bigger so people start like, you know, seeing this. My third goal would be similar to the second one, but it's like starting to meet new people in real life. Uh, starting to like, you know, go out more often, talk to people, see if, you know, if it's a young guy, like start, I want to start exercising outside. We have some outside gyms and I want to buy some rings. So I want to like do what Hamza said, you know, like yeah. being outside, finding a spot and doing you know, calisthenics, like, hey, man, like start, rings yeah. on the tree. Yeah. No, it's nice. Yeah. So I want to, I want to basically do that. Uh, but before I can get there, I think I need to work on my steps. Like I, I would say myself, I'm on step two and a half. Like I'm going to step three right now. So step one is when you're in the worst, like this is when you discover self-improvement This is when you like, you know, are quitting your bad habits from step zero to step one. I would say I'm on step two, like I'm still working on step two, which is like, you know, having your own habits, you know, setting up some goals, doing, you know, reading, meditating, it working out. I kind of want to level up that field first before I take to the next step. So that's my goal right now. Just get better, like start reading more books, which I have, I have like a list here on my wall. Uh, like I have like eight or nine books that I need to read that are like what Hamza recommends to like, you know, get more knowledge of the things they're doing. Because at the end of the day, like, I think my, my biggest goal in general is to become like another Hamza because you can only help so many people. So you're going to need different like tribe mem like tribe leaders yes. from different tribes, helping each other, coming together, working together and be like, okay, how do we, how do we impact the world more? Like, how do we get more young men into this like quickly? Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm seeing it everywhere. Like now that I've been on self improvement, now when I walk out, I see so many like young guys just staring at their phone, walking. Like, yes. I don't even like appreciate it. I could be waving, like, hey, get three million dollars right here. And no one would bet on it. fucking brain dead. It's like zombies. <laughs> yeah. I see it everywhere. And now that I've like, uh, well, become more aware of this, it's just like even me just standing on the metro, like on the commuting train, like when I was traveling to my sister, I just looked at the girls and all of them just. A few girls were paying attention to me, but they had like their boyfriends and everything. And I noticed like they started looking at me and it was like, this is the guy I should be with. There was like, I don't say this to like brag or anything, but so many girls started staring at me and they just kept eye counting. Like I just kept staring at them back, you know, like, you know, doing these little games, but they had their boyfriends and their boyfriends weren't even paying attention to them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, bro, I, this guy, your boyfriend, that's the, that, that was the guy I'm looking at myself four years ago. Like I look at the guy, I'm like, yeah, that was me four years ago. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal is like the big goal yeah it's to become another hamster yeah. that's it i can't say it. i can't i can't stress it enough that's that's a great goal i think and i, I don't know if you've watched his recent videos like hamster's videos um he made like a video full 10k a month guys yeah yeah it's two and a half hour video yeah he was like talking that's that. exactly video yeah man. yep that's exactly what i'm doing right now yeah and like we all have our own personality and stuff and we have to be ourselves and people will people we will attract people that are like us exactly. and not everyone will be like hamza and not everyone will like hamza no. so we have to replace that and maybe there's another guy that's just like me that's 17 years old and in self improvement they can't relate to hamza maybe that's a, a 23 right yeah yeah no how i'm seeing yeah. right now is just like hamza is already very successful uh, there's nothing, I'm not hating him or anything on this. Like, if you watch this, I'm not hating on you. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, he's already at the top. Like, he's climbed the mountain. Yes. He's at the very top. Now he's just looking to climb others. But compared to that, like, for a guy who is a beginner, like, complete beginner, like, say, like us, we can't really relate too much to him. Yeah, exactly. Well, in some aspects like that, but there's not a guy that's lifting people up. Like, hey, man, you want to go climb with me in this mountain? Like, yeah, sure. I think a lot of people would like would like to do that. You know, not many people like to start things alone. And I understand that, but I myself have that ability to start things myself. I always seen this as a kid, uh, like to, let's say, I remember this one time I, we were on a, uh, like a school trip. We were like in, in a medieval town and they didn't have bathrooms. They only had like these stalls, you know, you just go in and there's just a hole in there. <laughs> and none of the kids wanted to do that. I was the first kid to go there and, you know, do my business in there. And then as soon as I walked out, there was like five, six other people just waiting. Like I, all I, I know they were waiting for the first day to go. Like I needed to be the first guy. And that just motivated me to always be the first guy that does something. Yeah. So in my friend group, I'm probably the first one that does this self-improvement, like actually just putting my face out there soon. They will follow or they don't, you know, mm. that depends on them, but it always be like, be the guy. I always wanted to be the guy that, Hey, you know, go forward, yes. you know, lead other men, you know, be a natural leader. And that's, 
Yeah. That's always what I wanted to be. Yeah. But I kept fucking up myself by doing, you know, bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> I was preventing the leader to come out. Yeah, I always wanted to be that guy as well. I'm trying to trying to um, transition into being that guy, especially like at school, um, when we have like two like two presentations. Everyone is like, oh, I don't want to be the first. And like, I used to be so scared and anxious. And I usually don't like, yeah. come on, pick me, fuck off. Like, I'm gonna be the first one to do it, and I'm gonna lead in like in sports. And people are just messing around, and we have to do like, do like a group exercise. I'm like, bro, come on, like, let's do this together. You do this, you do that, I do this. Let's win. Mm -hmm. And all the time yeah. it also backfires because then people think that you're this cocky motherfucker that knows everything. But it's actually like, yeah. hey, come on, we have to do something. You guys are just wasting time. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's not really it's not it's not easy. I understand. Sometimes it has backfired on me and people are like, oh, what do, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. But it all depends like on the aura. So by self improving, people will. I don't know. It's like an aura, you know. Like if you're a Chad, you have this aura, and people want to listen to you, and you know that's also like one of the things that I didn't have too much of it. Like people would just like start talking over you and you're like, you disappear in the group masses. Like you become just, you know, a background noise. Yeah. So I can relate to that. A lot of things like it has backfired and people think, you know, said like, oh no, you, you tendency have to leadership, but you gotta add more, you know? And I didn't know what that more was until I found like the self improvement. Like, yeah, if you're a great person yourself, people are gonna notice. Yeah. But I still was doing the bad habits. So people didn't really respect me that much. Mm. I think you know I was the friend that walked. You know, if there's two guys walking in front of you, you were the guy in the third, like in the, oh, in, the in oh, how do I say this? If you're walking on a narrow road, there was always like two of your friends in front, and you were always the guy behind. Mm. I was always the guy behind. The back wheel. So yeah, mm. yeah. So I decided to break that cycle. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fucking let it happen to me again. Uh. <laughs> I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Yeah. So I don't know if you if you have experienced that, but you also get like a lot of hate or like kind of competition when you're on self-improvement from other guys especially i think it's just jealousy like when i'm at school and like be. they know my old self like i used to be really fat like 95 kilograms now i'm on like 74 Ooh. and i used to be, i would have never guessed yeah like i was i was obese and i was a loser and i also improved myself and i got a lot of hate from a lot of people like just That's jealousy i guess why they hate you. yeah yeah it's because of jealousy they are jealous because they could have been that guy they could have been you or they could have been that guy that did this but they never did it mm -hmm. so seeing someone else take over that place makes them jealous and yeah I, I i can i guess i could relate to some of the things but not entirely um i think i just have to experience that fully like if they see me like with a six pack and you know i'm starting to bench you know 250 pounds or 100 kilos in that the case uh, i think that's when people are starting to, like hey what the fuck what are you, what are you trying to be better than us i'm like yeah <laughs> obviously yeah. <laughs> uh no but because it is like i want to level myself up and when people see you level up self either you're gonna <laughs> love you for that or hate you for that and when they hate you it's because they themselves need to work on it and they they don't want to like uh what do i say this they don't want to improve themselves admit that they're yeah yeah they don't want to admit that they're actually losing a battle that they they themselves stated yeah <laughs> i think it's all of that like they think they're always on this competition like oh he's doing better than me he's doing better than me and and really it's just unhealthy competition like yeah sure it's always good to have some competition but only if like you and i would be to compete like okay who can do the most push-ups you know mm -hmm. like, that's a healthy competition yeah like, not about like who can get furthest in life that's like oh okay sure but uh why why, why would yeah. we do that like we all, all have different, different goals you know stuff, maybe you yeah. want to become a farmer i want to become a, a professional writer i don't know like we all have different goals but at the same time we all we all still pursue the same thing we just improve ourselves become a better guy than we were yesterday yeah exactly that's it and that's what unites us yeah uh, i try to get those people like from school and stuff like that onto self improvement as well um not like the saying oh my god go watch hamza but i when they see them smoking or they're talking about like partying and drinking on the weekend i'm like Tune it down a bit, like do some good stuff, like go to the gym and stuff like that. Like just trying to push it onto them, but it doesn't really work because they have to be con convinced by themselves. Exactly. And that's why I started alone. So I think maybe in the future, like one or two years ago, uh, in forward, fast forwarding, like one or two years for, from now, I think I might have some friends or friends though, that might actually like talk shit about me. Like, Hey, why did you leave us? Why didn't you like, well, it's because I never saw any potential in you. I'm sorry. Like sometimes you know you have to do some prospect like okay is this guy worth taking with me or not yeah you know and that's how life is 
and you will lose and gain a lot of friends. That's just how life is. Like when we are in this age, you know, 18 to 24, that's <clears> like when they say you, you get to know the most people, but you also lose the most people. So true. So, you know, you get to embrace it. Like, yeah, sure. I know people for 15 years and I don't even talk to them anymore. Yeah. I talked to one because at least he's like, you know, trying to become better, but it's not really in the self-improvement. He's like, okay, he's got a nice job. He's got a lovely girlfriend. Uh, hopefully they stay together. I think they're getting, uh, they're, what do you call it? Um, not married, um, but they're... Um, engaged. Engaged, they're engaged. So I just pray for them because he's a, he's, a, he's a pure soul. Like I generally hope for the best. Maybe when I've grown better, I might, you know, go help him with some things um, because not everyone is perfect, but he, at least he's like going forward in life. And he used to be the guy that never got any girls. Like he was like the lowest of the low. <laughs> and now he's like boom like he's got a girlfriend he's yeah. got a house he's got a job he's got everything but yeah no so i'm happy for him but for the other guys i don't know they never really included me i was always just there when they needed me and that's something that took me a long time to realize like yeah these aren't your friends mm. this, this is this is this isn't what a friendship should be yeah so i just like slowly just you know i wasn't talking to them every day we used to discord every day but i started like you know joining four times a week instead of seven and then two and now I don't even talk to them. Yeah. I think the last time I met them was like six months ago or something more than that. Maybe even more. It was at his birthday. Yeah. So I don't even talk to them anymore because they were just like in the same cycle, doing the same shits over and over again. I'm like, bro, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but hopefully with that, you know, I get to meet people like you, uh, some other guys that I've talked to, you know, you kind of just replace them with better friends. And those are the ones that last forever because you've worked together and you see yourself, you push together. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you think about like Andrew Tate pushing masculinity and overall like the masculinity crisis and feminism being like really popular, but then being like masculine is like toxic masculinity and misogynistic. Uh, I think it's a really good thing that he's doing. Like he's, I wouldn't say he's not the first one when it comes to talking about all of this, because like, I don't want to sound like arrogant or like, oh, but most of the things that he has said, I personally already I want to say knew it, but yeah. I, I was already familiar with it. That I think that's a better word, familiar with it. So I, I think he was more successful to influence because I've talked to or I've watched other YouTubers who talk the same things about him. Maybe not in the same style, but especially about like the feminist movement, uh, about how women are today, how men are today, everything around them. Like the whole red pill thing, but most of them will always get banned, you know, like censorship because they're like, oh, we can't allow to have that. Mm -hmm. But Tate was the one that managed to like break it uh, in that way. Yeah. So it's not the first one, but it's the first one to get this big, I would say. So I'm positive for it because now I'm seeing like young men, you know, starting to self-improve us. I think it must have like grown everywhere, like from Hamster server to his server. Like I, I met some amazing guys that were just like us, you know, but they decided to do something instead of just complaining. Yeah. Like starting to act instead of becoming a victim. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of victims today, but none is doing the work. Yeah. Uh, I and I think it's actually like an advantage because now for us, it's going to get easier. Yeah. Like the competition is like fucking basically zero. Like when yeah. I look around people in my school, in my age, no one is doing this shit. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> and like, <laughs> if I do this, if I carry on and I do this for like, it's, I don't know, for the rest of my life, but let's just say it's three more years, bro, I'm going to fucking shine in it. and I'm going to be a fucking yeah. star. And they're like, no, they're no one. They're like, it's a 99% yeah, well, and you're like the one. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be the 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 next leaders of this world, hopefully. Bro, like we're gonna shut yeah, up there. Start influencing. We're gonna shut up there with Hamza and Andrew Tate and <laughs> Elon Musk, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see here from five years or now, like how much can we grow? Yeah, uh, both financially, and how much can we fail? And... Huh? How much can we fail? Also, because exactly, we only that's grow by failure. Really, we need to learn from our mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, so the competition is very low and I see that, like, I'm not really, tr like, I'm still, I'm focusing on other aspects of self-improvement, like, I'm not, let's say, like, going out to meet girls, I'm not doing that right now, I might do start doing that, mm, maybe a couple of weeks from on now, once I've, like, settled in, because now I'm pretty green when it comes to the self-improvement, like, I'm still in the very early stages, so I want to, like, you know, get some more stuff and then I will start to put it on practice, mm -hmm. um, so that's in the stage I am right now. I, I think you can definitely... So, well, achieve something in the dating scene because it's, you seem like a really nice mm -hmm. guy you can definitely achieve something in the dating scene because you seem like a really nice guy and you also look really good i think it should work oh thank you 
Yeah, no, I've had some experience with some girls, so I'm not a complete noob, you know, I'm not a complete, like, uh, like, beginner, beginner, like, I can't even hold, I, like, I can talk to girls, yeah, sure, but I never really had too much game to, like, you know, get them to bed, but, you know, you attract what you are. So I'm really not, like, I never really was into that, you know, like, oh, who can get the most pussy in one month or anything, like, yeah, sure, maybe when we were younger, but now it's just, like, I really want to just find a girl that I can just vibe with. Yeah. You know, that's it. It's, yeah. Yeah, like that at least understands like my my future, my goals, so she can be there. Because having a good, faithful, loyal woman on your side, <clears throat> I know it's kind of rare for her to say this, but for me, but having a good, loyal woman on your side is so much powerful. Like you actually gain so much power from that. Mm -hmm. Like she gives you this extra energy that you needed. Yeah, that not so many girls can actually give. But finding that one, oh, you gotta keep it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, uh... and that's why my plan is to find one. Yeah, like I said, I broke up with my girlfriend three weeks ago. It's just. Like, she herself was an amazing woman, like, I got her into self improvement, she didn't take drugs and didn't drink alcohol anymore. She did it so social media because of, like, my influence, and I was, like, a great influence on her. And she also had to struggle, like, had struggling with, like, depression and stuff. But, because I have, I have my own struggles, especially, like, mental health struggles, I just, and the circumstances were so bad, like, long distance, and my family didn't like her, and some other stuff. I just had to break up because it sucked so much energy out of me. Like, I was just anxiety and, like, so much thinking about her. If she's all right, if this, 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 this. Like, what my family were going to say, what, how I have to act. And I completely forgot myself, but just trying to focus making her happy, which worked. And I knew she tried to make me happy, and, like, she was there for me. But I don't know, like, mm -hmm. I couldn't accept her love or something like that because I didn't value myself that much. And it's like a bunch of shit that plays into it. So right now I'm just gonna try to talk to some girls and um, upgrade my confidence and upgrade my game, but nothing serious, like no serious relationship like that. I have to l grow and learn so much more for me to be able to have a happy relationship where I'm also happy. No, yeah. no, I would say like the best thing we can do now, as you and I, I my, like I think I had my latest relationship was like. Uh, f like a real, real relationship was like five years ago, I think. But that's also when I left. I was doing really bad, also. But that's when I realized, like, she was just a mid girl. Like, she wasn't even that special. Like, yeah, sure, I was in love with her and everything. But that's like your first ever real relationship. Yeah. I've had some couple girlfriends, but you know they didn't last that long. And I feel bad for those who were trying to get me when I was at my lowest, <laughs> <laughs> because I I was just there to fulfill my need, which is like, oh, I, I just want to bust inside of a girl, and that's it. And they were genuinely good girls, but sure. you know. It's also their responsibility to see, like, hey, if a guy just broke up with a girlfriend, he's not going to be in the mood to have a, you know, cute relationship. He's just going to be full destruction, like, full hitting the G, full fuck boy, like a fuckboy mode releases on him. Yeah. Maybe not, but uh, it all depends from person to person. But, yeah, uh, finding a good loyal girlfriend is really, like, the key. And it's I know it's difficult now, but I think it's... Once we improve ourselves, we're just going to attract those women. Exactly. Just watch a video of Hamster talking about it. Yeah. And it's a book I actually want to read, which is called... Attached, I think. I, th I think that's the book he mentioned. Oh, is it about like, the yeah, three, three? Yeah, I read that as well. Like yeah. anxious, um, avoidant, and avoidance and secure. Secure. Yeah, I, I read uh, that as well. I haven't even read the book, but I want to read it. I, I have like a list here on my wall. <laughs> I just have like nine books, as I said earlier. Yeah, you should read it. It's I want to read it. Yeah, I should. Yeah, <clears throat> I will. I will find it somehow. Uh, so yeah, I. That's one of the goals. Also, like find a woman that I've. I always wanted to have like uh just one girl, and that's it. Like I could never. I can never be that guy that has, like, multiple girls at the same time. Mm, same. You know, only, like, some friends could, like, talk with five, six different women at the same time. Like, bro, it's not get the tiresome. Like, is it better to just have one woman that trusts you, you can chill with, and you can just, well, you, you know, just be yourself, but she still attracts you because you're still this masculine figure, you know? Yeah. I think like, I, like, I prefer that over a hundred million horse. I think, like, talking to different girls is fine because then you can, like, um, what are they called, spin the plates. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if one doesn't work out, you can date the other one. But for like a serious relationship, yeah. or when you look for something serious, long term, then I think you should focus on like one. Yeah. Particular no, girl. It's always been, it's always been like that. Like if I look at my family, like yeah, sure, my me and my my dad and my mother, uh, you know, broke up. But that's because of other reasons. It wasn't just because like they were looking at other. It just didn't work out at the end. Like it just they were just disagreeing on so much that you know they decided to depart, which is a respectful. Like it was such a peaceful way. Like I didn't even notice when it happened. This is like one day my dad was not home, you know, my my mother wasn't really pissed about it. It was like, yeah, no, it just didn't work out. So, like, from my family standpoint, we always <clears> had 
long distant relationships. Uh, I can't like if I look at my grandparents, they always they they stuck together until grandma died earlier, obviously. Mm. But you know, it was rare to see like oh immediately we just jump on a new partner. Yeah, it was always like you know one or two and that's it. Yeah, it's, it's the same for my grandparents. They got they married when they were nineteen. They met each other when they were like seventeen, so my age, and now they're like eighty two and they're still together. And then <laughs> yeah, it's... like what the fuck? Yeah. It's like how long is that? Fifty, sixty years? And today it's like yeah. five, six days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally my phone lasts longer than most relationships that I've seen. Bro, facts. <laughs> uh, especially <laughs> like in the West. Um like Western yeah, Europe yeah, and yeah. also America, I think it's really fucked. Um, so that's the reason why I want to move to like Thailand when I'm older or Dubai. Like, I don't want to stay in Germany. Like, Germany is just mm. shit weather, yeah, shit old people. Germany. Germany, Sweden, man. It's uh, mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> there's nothing left for us here, anyways. Like, man, like who wants to grow and have a family? It's nothing left here for us. It's just degeneracy. Yeah, exactly. And many other political stuff we can get mm -hmm. into, but you know, uh, maybe we not not for today. Yeah, that's a different but... topic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like for us genuine men who just want a family, you know, we want to build strong families, have strong kids, build, have a house and everything like Yeah, make money. That, but we also want to pursue other things. Mm -hmm. But that's important to have stability because it really adds stability and it just seeing other people grandparents hold that is just motivation. It they, they still exists. But it's just harder now to find it because now with TikTok, oh no, not even TikTok, like social media in general has ruined a lot of women. Also and, men <laughs> everything. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. much it's, yeah, it's misusage. I, I wouldn't really blame the social media in itself. It's just us who didn't know how to control it. Yeah, the because people that they, use it. They, yeah, they weren't really planned to do this. They were like, hey, you know, you can talk to your friends, you can do this. But I think it's just we got so hooked out into it. We didn't know what modernity was. Like, hey, be moderate about using internet and everything. Like, now I use internet for only to do my content. I just became a producer instead yeah. of a consumer. Yeah, exactly. Like, you choose what you do with your social media and internet use. You can, you're not forced to sit there six hours a day. Yeah, you can make it, it grab you. You can, like Hansa also said, you can run a whole business just on your phone and make money and improve yourself, or you can waste time on TikTok and Instagram looking at ass and jogging off. But it's, yeah, it's your it's your choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I I, yeah. I use social media now just to learn. Like I, I started listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, then also like watch YouTube videos about like long term YouTube videos, not short term. Uh, also about podcasts and like. Improving itself in general, money, the crypto, marketing, business, and um, yeah, just to use it to learn or to produce content or to grow my exactly. audience. But that's exactly. that's about exactly. it, and I think that's great because I transitioned to that from <laughs> only using it for porn, video games, entertainment, stupid shit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the internet is actually beautiful. Like it's a beautiful tool we have, but we've just, we've learned to misuse it. Yeah. And now we've started to like, Hey, actually, you know, yeah. Use it for good purpose. Like finding more knowledge. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 I look forward to start reading again. I hated to read when I was younger. What are your top three and books? I don't even have top three books. Well, right now the easy PC method is like my number one, because that changed me to the guy who I am mm -hmm. right now today as we speak you want to know something funny uh, <laughs> uh Hans actually made a video on that like one or two days ago his newest video oh really it's I called haven't watched that. i haven't watched I mean, it yeah but, and uh, i i read the title it's called um how to stop beating your meat like like a little monkey or something <laughs> and uh then i clicked like on the you can like put videos into like different parts and then I just looked at them and I was like, oh, it's from the book's easy piece of method. So I didn't watch it because I read, I read the book. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. No, that book at least changed me. And um, that's what I'm like putting the message out there because I think people can relate to someone who just quit that has been abusing it for so many years than someone who's already done, you know, many years ago. And yeah. you know, it's always more, the more relatable than you latest, like they talk about like, oh, if you want to start getting gains, you don't really listen to a guy who's been doing it 15 years. You won't be able to relate too much to it. But to a guy who's been doing it for three months, you're like, oh, huh? you know, is it really that good? It's like, yeah, man, I've been doing this for three months and I'm feeling amazing. You should start to yeah. like, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's just like, hey, you know, I'm just an average guy trying to improve myself to become above average and excellence. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can join me or, you know, or you can well, fuck off. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> in the in the in the more honest words, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that. 
my most favorite book is um, The Way is a Superior Man. And um, just a great book. You should read it as well if you haven't. It's uh, well, what's it called? Let me just write it down. Way the Way of the, Super of the Superior Man. Way of the Superior Man. Yeah. The author name? Uh, David Dido. David Dido. D E I D E A. Dido. Dido. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have it there. Yeah. I'll check it out later. Thank you. No yeah. problem. No, so I have like a whole list. I'm trying to grow up like books that actually help because I don't want to like read Harry Potter, you know? Yeah. Bro, like, I, I, I never, see a lot of people reading that shit. I never read like <laughs> fucking fantasy books or comics or something. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I only so I think read. I found my niche yeah. when it comes to reading book, which is self improvement, and it could be anything. It could be from how to have better sex to earn money to do anything. Yeah, to go about. <laughs> Sorry, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the um, the race of superior men is all about masculinity, and it's like about feminine and male energy, how you should like live life as a male. And also about relationships, and that really helped me to have a really good relationship with my with my ex girlfriend, and I could make her like really happy and fulfill her because I gave her like all the love and secureance and providing and everything. Um, yeah, so that worked really well, but I got nothing from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing because your relationship was a burden more than something that applies to you happily, you know, and that's something that I also learned really. Like in a hard way, like my real relationship that I have with this girl, man, it was so toxic. Now that I look at it, it was beautiful in the beginning, like the intentions were good, but then it slowly translated into this toxic relationship. And yeah, man, I was like, is this really a relationship? It's just I feel dragged out. I feel like I'm I need to put more work, and it's just I don't know. It wasn't doing anything. It wasn't doing me any favor. Like yeah, sure, she was good in bed, but that was it. Like I think that's why it kept the relationship for so long is because I yeah. was really good and she was really good. It's like, you know, so I think that I think that was it. It's, it sounds hard to say this, but that's like the thing I miss the most, like just the sex and like um, the closeness and like cuddling and stuff like that. Like I, I really miss yeah. that. But besides that, I have so much more time to focus on myself. I'm also yeah. saving a fuck ton of money, like because she was living far away. I had to buy train tickets and stuff like that. And we also went eating, and then it was there another twenty bucks, and I bought her a T-shirt, another twenty bucks, and I bought her some candy with like a lot of you on it, another five bucks, and like, <laughs> like all the stupid shit. Yeah, no, they cost. <laughs> and, yeah, they cost, and yeah. yeah, and also that, yeah. I think when you're in a relationship, you're also like slacking a bit in self improvement because you're like, I've already got a woman, like I don't have to improve my looks anymore, and, like I can stop going to the gym and when you. Oh yeah, I relate to that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I start uh, when I was with her. I stopped working. I was like, "Why? I know I'm not. I don't need to impress other women." And that's such a bad trait to have. Yeah. You always want to like. You should push even harder when you have a girlfriend because you want to like. Maintain. I don't her. know. For me, it's always She's been like this. Home. Like in a relationship, if I'm together with a woman, she should also like take care of herself because I want to also take care. It's a it's a way to show respect, honestly. Like I always want to like you know, be beautiful to her, and she would be beautiful to me, in every way. Yeah. So it's really important. Yeah, so that's why it's important to find a high quality woman. So yeah, that she always pushes you, and you can push her also. The problem is yes. for like men on self improvement that when you get into a relationship, you after like a few months or a few years, you become better, and then you're not like on the same level anymore. So yeah, the best idea is like to, like I said, get a girlfriend that's also high quality or a girlfriend that's also on self improvement that you can grow together. Because you're just gonna exactly. grow, and then you're like, I can attract better girls now. Like, why am I still together with this, with this <laughs> shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So my idea, my best idea, <clears throat> is to go like monk mode for six months or a year, because that's where you really like start reflecting for yourself, and you will grow as a person. I've done it before, but not really in this level. Like, not in this level. I tried to go monk mode, but I just ended up not talking to people, and that's not really monk mode. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Do we have any more questions now? Yeah, just to wrap it up. One, one last question uh, to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out the self improvement journey? There are a few I think I can give, depending. So, first would be like the age. If it's a younger guy that's starting out, if you're watching this, honestly, it's probably the best time. Like, if you see this podcast, somehow it gets recommended to you, man, you've been blessed because this advice might change you. 
but honestly just stick to it like watch some of the content that are out there and join a community i think that's the best thing you can do join a community with people that are like-minded that have just started and you will see yourself actually start growing and even if you don't see results in the first two weeks you're still like you've created an alternative life like you could i don't know if i could draw it but i say this is a straight line this would be your life you just go straight nothing would happen but then after you watch this it would just like do this and so what i'm trying to say with that is when you start with your self-improvement it's it's difficult to stop but just stick to it like go through through the first weeks i think the first weeks are the hardest because that's when you change something but also set up some realistic goals like don't be that guy that just like oh i'm gonna become a multi-billionaire when i'm you know in a couple of years it's like nah that's not gonna happen learn how to make your first dollar online learn how to make your first pull up like learn the first step that would be my like my advice to it and i know it's kind of like <clears throat> broad of everything but it all really depends who who's listening to this if you're a young guy start with the small things and just putting the work like you don't have to do it every like start just do the work every day honestly um, yeah but if you're an older guy that you're in your mid 30s to 40s yeah it can be tougher because now you have more responsibility yeah, it's so more really it's just mm. yeah so it's difficult because this is the thing this is the beautiful thing about being young and starting young is that you don't have to do this later on you already know what to do you already know everything but if you're a guy that started in it's like it's not over but it's like you're gonna you just have to put in more work like yeah. after you've done finished your work in your nine to five instead of going home and doing all this shit you need like you always do change them for something better like going to the gym start reading books and eventually it will stack up yeah and my biggest recommendation advice is just get a journey book and just write in like here you can see everything that i've done in some yeah. few days and really just be honest with yourself with it i think that's the best things i can give out yeah, totally. It's fucking great. Like I've, I've like I think I've like <laughs> six like books already. Was written full like about self improvement yeah. books and everything that I want to learn. So yeah, my advice is also like get a journal. Actually, think about what you do. Don't be like blind and follow everything without thinking about yeah. it. Like ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why is this right? Why is this not right? And um, also learn outside from school when you like in my position like school didn't doesn't teach me anything valuable even though i'm going to business school in a couple of months i don't think it will teach me that much uh, valuable stuff so i'm just learning uh, about self improvement and uh, human psychology and all that outside of school so use your free time to learn yeah. and grow exactly use your free time to self improvement yeah and then again if you feel like you want to talk to some person i don't know i'm gonna have my discord link in the description you can reach me up there we can do free talking like if you feel like you want to go more personal and i assume you also martin i don't know uh, marlon i mean yeah you know maybe you have a link there so people can talk to you immediately yes it's all about helping out man that's that's what it is like as soon as you've grown up in this you want to help others that's probably like the best bit we can do right now yeah in the future okay so all right i think that's it for today um thanks yeah. for listening to the better everyday podcast um it's the first episode and i hope you enjoyed it 